How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to another video here on launch day for NHL 23. In my last video earlier today, I went through a little deep dive of the rosters for all 32 NHL teams, followed by quickly skimming through the AHL, QMJHL, OHL, and WHL. But in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you my first roster for the roster sharing on PlayStation 4. Now, if you don't have a PlayStation 4, the good news is this first roster that I'm sharing is all about being cap compliant in franchise mode due to LTIR long-term injured reserve not being a part of franchise mode. So I'm not making small minute changes to players that you, it's going to take you hours and hours to fix. If you don't have a PS4, you can follow along in this tutorial or in the puck article in the description or slash even in the pinned comment which hasn't gone up yet if you're watching within like 10 minutes of upload but will be going up later the, today or tomorrow or sometime this week which has all of the steps that you need to make your franchise mode salary cap compliant because for example on the Vegas Golden Knights with all you know Shea Weber and um, Laurent Brassois and Nolan Patrick all the LTIR they're using because of that Jack Eichel who's supposed to be getting paid 10 million dollars now when you open up a franchise mode, he's getting paid 9.8 for four more years, which makes it easier for the AIGM or even for you and you may not want that to manage that team. You want that team to be in the same salary cap situation that they are in in the real world. So there are changes that you make to each team, such as reducing the salary on an expiring deal so that the franchise mode is impacted as um, uh, minimally as possible. So not every team needs these changes. It's a relatively short video. Most teams in the NHL are salary cap compliant, but you can follow along with this video, download the roster, or go through the article to hear how to make your franchise mode salary cap compliant. In this first roster that I'm sharing, it is just the first EA roster in terms of overalls and potentials, I'm not touching any of that plus my additions over the last month because they didn't have, for example, the uh, Nathan McKinnon extension, the Jordan Cairo extension, the Mackenzie Weger extension. So the last, I think, three weeks of transactions in NHL, I did those manually, plus did the salary cap changes. Now it's up to you if you would like to do more. Later on, maybe a week from now, I, once more prospects have played and get added to the game, once the those rosters, the EA rosters are a bit better, then I will make my changes, do their salary cap changes, and put out my my second roster. But this first roster is likely best because maybe you won't agree with the changes that I make. This will allow you to download my roster and then go and play with it right away, or you can make changes based on what you think, but you'll know that the salary cap is compliant and your franchise mode won't be wonky once you start it up. Now, with all that being said, the first step I got to do is show you how to drop a player to free agency or transfer them to an international team. Players who are not going to be playing again, who are on LTIR, such as Ryan Kessler or uh, Carey Price, Michael Furland, Oscar Clefbaum, etc. Those players can be dropped as opposed to just being dropped in overall and, uh, and salary. They can just be dropped entirely. So you'll want to go click on rosters and scroll down to player movement. From player movement, you'll want to scroll down. I put him back on the ducks to, get to show you as an example. Scroll all the way down and you'll find a 70 overall player. For example, on Tampa, you'll find Brent Seabrook. On Anaheim here, you find Ryan Kessler. If they're one of these players, they're at the bottom and they're 70 overall rated. You'll press square on PlayStation, at least for me. You'll add him to the uh, the trade, whatever the screen you want to call it, a little exchange at the bottom. Then you'll want to go over to the next screen, go to an international team, choose any international team. I've been putting them mostly on Ukraine and you'll go ahead and press X and finish. So for example, you see Clefbaum, Seabrook, Price, Ferlin, Kessler, Mike Smith, uh, I think I had some more Chara, Ra um, Yandel, Perot, Green, retired players, PK Subban, guys like that who I don't want to be in free agency, transfer them all to international teams. Because if I drop a guy to free agency who's still good, like for example, Oscar Clefbaum, who's still an 85 overall, if I drop him to free agency, another team will sign him. So I would prefer to remove him altogether. If I wanted to remove a player from the team, I would, for example, John Gibson, instead of re uh, transferring him to the international scene, I would just press triangle and that would drop him to free agency. So either way, whether it be free agency or an international team, that's how you kind of erase a player. So with that understood, we can go back to the rosters and go to edit player and we're back on the Anaheim Ducks. So for the Ducks, you just want to drop Ryan Kessler to free agency or transfer him to an international team. That's it. 
over on the Arizona Coyotes, you actually need to add salary. They're under the salary cap, so you need to add approximately $4 million to any expiring deal. What I did was that I went ahead and saw Nick Bugstad making 900K. I added, what, 3.6 million, and now he's making 4.5. And instead of, for example, Clayton Keller making 7.4 million for the next six years because the, the computer would have adjusted it, now Bugstad's making 4.5 for one year, yes, but it allows Keller, Gosus Bear, Chick, and everyone to be normal. So add a little money to an expiring deal and you're good to go. Arizona Coyotes, done. Boston Bruins, you need to reduce David Pasternak's salary from 6.667, I believe is the salary originally, to 4.75 million. The Bruins are slightly over. So reduce an expiring deal such as David Pasternak's by a little bit. And that's all you have to do in Boston. On the Buffalo Sabres, they're the second of two teams that you need to add salary to. So for example, Tage Thompson, I added his extension. That's one thing the game didn't have. Have. But instead of having Jeff Skinner making 9.2 for the next five years, you can go ahead again and find an expiring deal. I went ahead and took Zemgus Gergensen's. Instead of him making 2.2 for the next year, he's now going to be making 7 million. So you need to add approximately 5 million. It's a lot, but thankfully it's only for one year on an expiring deal. Now, on to the Calgary Flames. The Flames are cap compliant for 2022-23, but they are not going into 23-24 and forward because of the Huberdo and Uyghur extensions. To counteract that, there are two players who are on small deals for two years. Uh, the first one being Dylan Dubé, uh, 81 overall, Dylan Dubé. You make uh, bring his salary from 2.3 million down to 0 0.75, which is league minimum, and you do the same for Kevin Rooney, who's a 76, I believe. Yes, bring his salary down from 1.3 to 750k, and that's all you got to do in Calgary. Over to the Carolina Hurricanes now. You once again, need to take some salary off of an expiring deal. You could do it to Max Pacioretty, but I went ahead and did it to Jordan Stahl, removing about five million. So you could go Pacioretty from seven down to two. I did Jordan Stahl from six down to one. The Jordan Stahl expiring deal, one million. That's all you gotta do in Carolina. And that keeps the rest of the team salary cap compliant and no one will be altered. Now the next few teams, you don't gotta do anything for Chicago. There's nothing that you have to do for Colorado. Even when you add the McKinnon extension, there's nothing that you have to do for Columbus. There is nothing that you have to do for Dallas. There is nothing that you have to do for Detroit. Now on to the Edmonton Oilers. On the Oilers, Oscar Clefbaum is still an 85 overall making a lot of money. So you need to transfer him to an international team or reduce his overall and drop him to free agency entirely, whatever you want to do. On top of that, you need to reduce Yessi Pugliarvi's salary from 3 million down to uh, the league minimum of 750K. On top of that, I would also recommend dropping Mike Smith, who's a 70 overall on LTIR. So basically two guys to drop and one player to reduce the salary of in Edmonton. Over on the Florida Panthers, you need to reduce the salary of Patrick Hornquist from 5.3 million down to 1 million, taking about 4.3 million off the books right there. An expiring deal, older player, shouldn't be an issue. And that's the only thing that Florida needs. Now, a lot of teams in a row that don't need anything, just showing you the salaries and you'll see some of the changes I've made. For example, the Kings don't need anything. I added the Mikey Anderson and the Sean Dersey deals, a lot of things that the game did not have off the bat. The Minnesota Wild do not need anything. The Montreal Canadiens do not need anything. The New Jersey Devils, do, excuse me, the Nashville Predators do not need anything. The New Jersey Devils do not need anything. The New York Islanders do not need anything. The New York Rangers do not need anything. And the Ottawa Senators do not need anything. Now, on the Philadelphia Flyers, not much is needed. I did add the Travis Sanheim extension, for example. One more thing that makes it a good idea to download those rosters from good old Beta 782. And by the way, I don't get any commission or anything on those, whether you download them or not. I'm just trying to help out the NHL community, so I hope that they will be helpful for you. James Van Riemsdyk, reduce him from 7 million down to 6 million. So just a $1 million reduction for JVR. And then you see the Pittsburgh Penguins. Again, a small reduction of just one player. Teddy Bluger from 2.2 million down to 1 million, and that's all the Penguins need. San Jose Sharks, no changes there. Uh, Seattle Kraken, no changes there. St. Louis Blues, no changes there. Tampa Bay Lightning, you don't have to make any changes, but I would recommend dropping Brent Seabrook. Toronto Maple Leafs, one change here, where the salary of Alex Kerfoot will be reduced 
from 3.5 million to 1 million. So clearing up 2.5 million there. I also went ahead and added the Rasmus Sandin contract. I added um, Zach Aston Reese to the team, a few things there for Toronto. Uh, next on to Vancouver. Again, nothing necessary, but I would recommend dropping Michael Furland. Now here's the big one, the Vegas Golden Knights, the one that you've possibly been waiting for. First off, the goaltenders. Pretty much all expiring deals have to be league minimum. Laurent Brassois and Aiden Hill down from 2.325 and 2.175 million respectively, both to uh, 750k. After that, you'll also want to reduce the contract of Phil the Thrill Castle from 1.5 million to 750k. You'll have to reduce Nolan Patrick from 1.2 million to 750k, and you'll have to reduce Brett Howden from 1.5 million to 750k. So five players being reduced to league minimum for Vegas to make them cap compliant. That's it for Vegas. Washington Capitals, a couple changes here actually. You may be surprised. Dmitry Orlov, it's a big one, from 5.1 million to 750K. Basically, you can do Orlov and you get it all out of the way, or you can do a few expiring players like Connor Brown. You, you know, you'd have to do Brown and Eller and Strom maybe, or just maybe two of those. It's, you know, how, whichever permutation you like, but I prefer to just do it in one player to keep the least amount of things from being altered. Orlov from 5.1 million down to 750K, and Nick Jensen from, Nick Jensen from 2.5 million down to 750K as well. The Winnipeg Jets are salary cap compliant, and that wraps up the league, ladies and gentlemen. So that is how you make your sal your 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 uh, rosters cap compliant for your franchise mode series. In future rosters, it shouldn't change too too much over the course of the season. Keep an eye on that Puckpedia link because I will be updating it. So if you're watching this video well after the date in which it's been uploaded, check out the article because I may have made some changes to it. But I doubt that any major changes will come uh, moving forward. Maybe towards the end of the year when more players are injured into a playoff push, but. Within the next few months, I wouldn't foresee any major changes. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that this was a helpful little tutorial for you. If you are on PlayStation 4 and you would like to download these rosters, let me show you how you do that. You'll go over to the More tab, click on Roster Sharing. You'll go on to Download Community Files, and you'll want to scroll down until you find... There aren't too, too many. You want to scroll down until you find... I just uploaded them now. Data Cap Compliant. Hey, already one download in uh, less than I think 15 minutes hey look at that data cap compliant you can't you can't add numbers and you can't put like characters at all so it's a pretty basic name the description adjusted player salary so that teams will be cap compliant and not get altered due to LTIR simple enough I hope it's helpful for you leave a like if it was indeed helpful for you leave a comment with your thoughts and be sure to subscribe of course for franchise mode career simulation and much much more NHL 23 content coming your way now that the game has dropped we'd love to have have you as a part of the team both here on youtube and over on the discord server so check that out in the link in the description as well and i will leave you there thank you very much for taking the time to watch i hope that it was helpful and i look forward to seeing you again in the next one